Hello, everybody. Welcome to Goldbridge Saves Football. I'm absolutely devastated this week. I look at look at the Will. Look, look at Will's face. I can tell he absolutely is going to sit there and say, "Wow, the Man City dominance isn't a bad thing," but it is. Liverpool have lost it. Arsenal have bottled it. Uh, there's lots more to talk about. There's there's the Champions League race. It looks like we're not going to get fifth place. So with Villa. You know, taking it from another bottle of Spurs. We've got some fantastic either ors uh, like Nunez or Ollie Watkins or Emery or Arteta. There's lots to get into on the show, Will. But uh, come on, wind me up with your nonsense that it's not a bad thing that Man City win the league again. No, I've done some research this morning and, and I think there's some positivity that Manchester City couldn't even win the league this season. So I'm still holding on to that hope. But no su- chance. Super Sunday turned into shitty Sunday for me and maybe a minute silence for the, the title race being over, I think. Uh, it's just it's unbelievable. But you know what? I've said it a few times. If you took Man City out of this league, we'd be sat here celebrating Villa and Palace saying this is the beauty of the Premier League, the best league in the world. I think we're so close. And I know Simon Jordan does feature on Pratt of the Week for his comments about Man City. But we're so close to actually having the best league in the world with regards to not just revenue and interest and viewership, but... Man City, I've always predicted they're going to win the league. I've always said they're going to win the league. And they will win the league because they to beat them, you've basically got to do what Liverpool did. I mean, what, what we were saying before, six out of the last seven they've won. And Liverpool only won it because they did something superhuman and went and won nearly every single game. Well, that's not that's not entertaining anyway. We want league, we want title races where Villa do beat Arsenal and Palace do go and scrape a win at Anfield. But the trouble is, if you've got Man City in your league, and I don't think Man City this season are actually been that good. They've dropped a lot of points. They're still going to win it at a canter. We are in danger of this league becoming the. Uh, the French League, really. Well, you always speak about your mum's chuff and people that are up the chuff. I and... don't speak about my mum's chuff. <laughs> We're not having any of that on here. <laughs> Disgrace. You speak about c- certain people up chuff. Other people's mum's chuff. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, not your mum's chuff. Let's not make it personal. Sorry, no disrespect to your mum or, or a chuff. <laughs> Sorry, but what I was going to say was when we were growing up, the Premier League was like, for me, the, I think the total points would always be around like 70, 80, mm. that would get you your win. And like you said, we're going into this territory now where you're going to have to average it out about late night. Like when Manchester City did the 100 points thing a couple of years ago, it was such a big achievement where now it just turns into like, that's probably the average amount of points that you're going to have to get to be competitive in a league title. So yeah, I just want... Change. I think we. Sh- I don't want to bang on about it, but we're still over this sort of cloud of one one five, and is I, a joke, which yeah. is a joke. And I don't think it gets spoken about enough because I'm not. I don't know the facts about it, but the charges are there, and that's still pending. So what do we have? Six of the seven title races just dismissed if they get uh, proven guilty. So there's all of that, and then it, also just the disappointment of. Liverpool and Arsenal losing at the weekend with the backdrop of Man City just winning. But I still don't think, you know, I saw people tweeting about, oh, the title's over, Arsenal season's done. I mean, what, a point in it? Two points in it? Uh, you know what? Uh, we'll come back to the to the integrity of the league and why the Premier League isn't that good. Um, you, you can't argue that you've got a great league when somebody's winning it six times out of seven and the three teams that are coming up are basically going down and I don't think Luton will but it's going to be close so what what's interesting about this Premier League if the same team wins it and the same teams that come up go down but look let's talk about where it all went wrong because for the last few weeks we've been talking about what a title race what a title race and now we're back where we didn't want to be where we're talking about Man City winning it I think starting with Liverpool Klopp's lost it, as I said in the title. Um, and I'm a big fan of Klopp, but he, he lost it after the game. He said it was, you know, a shambles. It was, in, you know, it was hard to watch, etc. But I actually think inadvertently he's, he's, he's got this wrong. Um, I think that many people felt that there was going to be this crest of a wave final few months sort of, you know, open top bus tour to Dublin to win the Europa League and win the Premier League. And when you actually look at it, we were all on that wave going, it would be really interesting if it works. But... There's two things about that. First of all, Sir Alex Ferguson, when he retired, he retired the first time and it went wrong. Ten years before, he he said, I'm going at the end of the season and United started playing really badly. And he said, I'm staying. And then when he actually did retire, he only announced it like two weeks before the end of the season. So there was never any of that hype. Yeah, but do you not think that Jurgen Klopp's recognised, because even at the start of the season, we were all saying Man City, Arsenal, the two title, and he sort of noticed that this could be a galvanising factor for him, but Mm. it's maybe gone up in smoke in his face a bit. Yeah, I think I, I, I just think that Liverpool 
inexplicably over the last few weeks have just bottled it in the sense that maybe the pressure's too much. And I think if Klopp was staying for another year, would the same thing have happened? And I, I sort of detect it probably wouldn't because I don't think, this is the second thing I was going to say, this Liverpool team to me, Klopp shouldn't be walking away from it. I know why he's walking away oh, from it. Gotcha. It's because he needs the break and everything like that. But when you look at the evolution of the team, do you look at that Liverpool team and say, it's as good as his team that won the league? It's a team that he's almost building. And when you're building a team, you will le- you, you have to make the mistakes to learn from it. It's like Arsenal last year. And when you look at Liverpool in the last couple of games, last few games, actually, they're creating the chances they're going one. They're going one nil behind a lot, and then they're not scoring big chances. That to me is inexperience. And mm. I know they've got Salas and Van Dykes, but they've also got McAllisters, Sabozlais, Nunez. They've got a lot of Inic Bark, uh, um, the, the Bradley at right back. They're still a team that really you'd go push this year, next year you're ready. But Klopp's not going to be there, so I just think the whole Klopp thing is probably going to lose them this title. And it's not really like saying Klopp's to blame because he needs to look after himself and obviously he's stressed and he needs the break. But I think we're starting to see that this Liverpool team probably wasn't quite ready. And also that the announcement of him leaving has probably pumped a lot of pressure onto a team that probably isn't quite ready as well. I don't know. I think it, well, it came up before the Carabao Cup final, didn't it? And you could argue that's what got them over the line in that extra extra time win there. But that was never going to be sustainable because that was kids. That yeah. was kids. That but was then sort of also, like they... also, it's like the the squad like is not title ready, is it? So no, it's not. And I think that like it's almost like they've over exceeded where they wanted to be at at this part of the season, and the squad's going to cost them when it comes into this running. Like we were looking at the Villa squad and and the Arsenal squad, and when you do compare it to Manchester City, they're just not ready. Plus the fact is Jurgen Klopp's going to go, and Arteta becomes sort of the. The, the second in line to challenge Manchester City, and we we need more of those. Like Pep's going to be the longest serving manager in the in the Premier League by some some mile now, isn't he? And mm. how how often do we speak on this podcast by saying you need time? The more you can implement your time, someone goes put another player in there and and go again. So that's why it's worrying for me. The interesting thing I'd ask the chat is basically if Klopp hadn't if Klopp if you had the choice between Klopp announcing it in January or announcing it two weeks from the end of the season, which do you think would benefit Liverpool's season better? And I think that um, it's a tough one to call, isn't it? I think in in neither scenario they win the league, actually. No, yeah, 100%. I don't. don't. So maybe, maybe maybe, maybe Klopp announces he's going has actually kept them in the title race longer than they would have been if he'd never said he was going. I don't know. Because I still just think Liverpool are a work in progress. We've, we've spoken so much this season about how he took a midfield that was redundant and has made it in, in one summer really, really good. Um, that, that, yeah, I, I, they've had a lot of injuries. You know, I don't think Salah's really back from that injury in January yet. Jot has been out for a long time. <sighs> Look, you know who they need still. I've said it before, Haaland. Nunes have registered 100 shots in this Premier League, only 10 Premier League goals. There's a man that you dismissed. He probably Simplistic. could have done a job. That's yeah? what I expect. Simplistic. That oh, yeah. No, very, no. very, 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 yeah, very simplistic. Nice, yeah, no, I, I think with Liverpool that, um, like, you know, when you look at this, this may be part of the reason Jurgen Klopp wants to go because when he looks at Man City and Pep, he's a competitive individual. He's very passionate. What problems has Pep had this year? Like, oh, I've got the best striker in the world. Phil Foden's arguably one of the best attacking midfielders in the world. Kevin De Bruyne is one of the best attacking midfielders in the world. You know, he's benching the like of Kovacic. That Nunez guy from Wolves has hardly played, and yet he's a very, very good player. He's got multiple defenders. Rodri's been the only problem when he's been suspended. Yeah, Rodri's the best holding midfielder in the game. Grealish, Doku, Silva. He's got so much Even talent. like when Edison was out and Ortega comes in, drops a Cruyff turn at Sellers Park, and they're out and playing from the back again. It's not a coincidence to me that you hit April and the team with the best squad is just, you know, brushing Yeah, but that ties up. back into, doesn't it? Like, I remember listening to um, Tom Wagner at Blue speaking about the other day and it's just like, there's no, there's there's an easy correlation even in the championship that you spend the most money, you get the best results mm. and like that's proven and I don't, the, the only challenger of that now, that's the winning thing, the only challenge of that in terms of money and resources is Newcastle, but they're being blocked out by the Premier League rules to be able to spend their money. So then we're just like stuck let's in Let us have the fifth air play, man. <laughs> oh God, let's play that back. Um, yeah, but look, look we're, at, uh, we're at the Goldbridge Arms at Sol- Solihull Moors and yeah. you look at the National League into the normal league, yeah. no, you know, Wrexham, Salford, they've all done it because yeah. they had had a lot of money. Um 
yeah, look, it's very. I'm very disappointed. I mean, look, there was a massive part of me as a United fan that was happy that Liverpool lost and bottled it because they're our biggest rival. But then there's that down... I, I saw United fans celebrating it. Uh, I'd rather City win it. And I'm like, there's something very cheap about that because the rivalry with Liverpool is integrity and you want them to lose. Yeah. But then saying you want City to win has no integrity, It's a, which is why I want... We're going to talk about Arsenal in a moment, of course. But I, you know what? What do we do? Like, I, how do we? We're here to say football. Like, six out of seven. Like you, it's like disgusting. yeah, like you said. Like we're, I think we're in a state of denial, really, that we're not the Bundesliga. No, I, we're not the yeah. French league. Like, what do we do to stop this? I, I, you know what? I think we need to be vocal about it. I mean, this is what this podcast is all about. I'd love to know what other people think. It's almost what you said um, when Carragher mentioned it a week ago that we've almost become indoctrinated into we can't say that. We yeah. can say that. They've got 115 charges against them. It was a penalty on McAllister against Do- when Doku did it. Like they, 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 they have a much better squad than everybody else. Their revenue is now massive because they've pumped that money in that Newcastle can't. They're not going anywhere. Like they, their revenue is up with Real Madrid. So people talk about financial fair play having teeth. It's too fucking late because Man City are now financial fair play compliant. So they can go £700 million of revenue. Um, our wages aren't particularly bad. Massive gap between the two. There's another £150 million on the next big thing and the next big thing. This ain't going anywhere. Six titles out of seven, it's not going anywhere. Pep Guardiola's the best manager in the world. Foden's probably the best player in England at the moment. De Bruyne is still the best player in the world in his, in his position. Haaland... Masses of defenders. Vardyel's only going to get better. Edison's one of the best goalkeepers in the world. The best squad in the world. They're not going anywhere. And people sit back and go, I hope past that a Liverpool could defy the odds. They're not going to defy the odds over a nine-month season. I, the only positive about this year is that I predicted that it would be over by Christmas. Yeah. And that's partly because Man City lost a few games they wouldn't normally because they've not... I mean, this is Man City on a seven. Yeah. You know, this is not Man City on a 10 and they and they could still win the treble. And of course, overarching all of that, you've got two things. One, it's not a competitive league because one one team has all the advantage, but two, they got it on 115 charges. And what people do not want to listen to is whether they get found guilty or not, the rules they operated under don't exist anymore. They were the only team that could pump money in in a way that you can't do anymore. And that advantage, whether it was cheating or not, is killing this league. And also, People don't want to have that conversation. No, and also they're in a position now where you, all the things that you've mentioned just put them into the, the bracket of a Real Madrid-Barcelona. So when an Erling Haaland comes up for grabs, who obviously the fee wasn't that much comparatively for what you get, you can attract him because you're in that stratosphere of like, we are the dominant force in, in English football now, we are the dominant force in European football now. So they're in that bracket by doing all these things. So then that's just another snowball effect to where, I don't know, say Jude Bellingham's contract comes up at Real Madrid. They'll be first in line for that. Look, I was listening to the radio this morning. I was stuck in traffic. Congrats. So I was listening to it for a long time. And they were saying, City fans, um, Liverpool fans, Arsenal fans, get your calls in. I've done that show. I know how it works. I've seen the switchboard and it was going Liverpool, Arsenal, Arsenal, Liverpool, right? They'll have a list of Liverpool and Arsenal fans and it'll be massive. And then you look at the Man City list and it'll be like tumbleweed going past the screen. Not one Man City fan. And I know how that show works. They'd be desperate to get a Man City fan. Man City fans, there's either not enough of them or they can't even be asked to phone in because... You know, we've all been to school with those people. We've all worked with those people who support Man City. And it's just like, oh, yeah, cry, cry me a river, blue moon and all this. No, but I think but I don't think that, I don't, How can you enjoy that? I do know a couple of Man City fans who will love it because they were fans before the money. Yeah. But th- there's no integrity to them at all. No, there, but I there's think no it's, t- integrity. it's tough if you're a Manchester City fan because you can't defend what you don't know. Like, we don't really know what's in the 115 115- charges really like the, the the ins and outs of it so you're stuck in this state of flux where your team's the most dominant it wants to be people are like throwing all this muck at you that might be right and might be wrong but then you're like well what can I do are you just there to support your team so I think ultimately like the club are putting fans in a terrible position because they're not bothered no I, uh, well I think I think they are to a certain extent but I, but the Premier League of course this I mean yeah. you know it's like it's like Ten Hag picking you know, Rashford and Casemiro at the weekend, it's not the players' fault, it's the manager's fault. And ultimately, the Premier League have caused all this because what they've done is, and people need to start forgetting about the charges in the sense that that will take its course. And of course, it's a joke that they could win a Premier League when basically they could be cheating. I mean, that's just a joke, When you know, how long it takes. But 
What Man City fans cannot argue with is before 2008, they didn't have a pot to piss in and they were a nothing club. They had integrity. Now, what's happened is from 2008 to now, Abu Dhabi bought them and has basically pumped a load of money in that they never made. They didn't. And 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 this conversation is is separate to the 115. And for some reason, journalists are scared about talking about it. The mainstream is scared about talking about it. Bottom line is, in 2008, a very poor club had a load of money go in. And for 10 years, that money went in above their revenue. They didn't have the revenue. And with that money, they bought people like Rubinho and, and Vincent Company and, me, many, and Aguero. And by pumping that money in, they got better and better and better and better. And that's where they are now. No other club can do that. Newcastle want to do it. They're saying, we just want to copy what Man City did. We've got the money. Let us do it. No, you can't do it anymore. So forget the 115, whether they cheated or they didn't. The integrity of the league is gone because no other club can do what they did. So they're now going to sit in that position for, what, 10, 20, 30 years and no one's going to lay a glove on them. I mean, I think what Arsenal and Liverpool are doing is fantastic. And if you took Man City out of the league, it would be an amazing title race. But Liverpool do not have the players or squad or resources that Man City have. And Arsenal, to be honest, need a striker, a left back and another midfielder. And yet their fans are crying Arteta out. You are nowhere near Man City. But I think the only saving grace is like in this new, if, if FFP is to have teeth, is every, what we're speaking about with the Spurs model of like trying to gain as much revenue as can from your facility. Yeah, so yeah. Like with Spurs, they're in a fantastic place. But then even to get to Man City, I mean, that's still a massive step, isn't it? Who's winning the league next year, Will? I would probably go, uh, I think if Luton stay up, I think they've got a good chance. Ross Barkley in a fine bit of form. It's Man City. Who's winning the league next year, Will? Man City. Nothing's going to stop it. And, and and we can't just sit there praying. Like when you actually deep it down at the start of the season, Man City, I said, would have this wrapped up by Christmas. That's the only surprise to me. They're still going to win it. That doesn't mean it's any closer. And look, let's talk about Arsenal. Yeah. I, I, look, close Liverpool off. What's your thoughts on Liverpool? You know, have they bottled it? Have they overachieved? I still think, just to sum around that, but I, I did a little bit of research, which might surprise you this morning. Two things that have given me saving grace. Was great. it porn again? Yeah, it was porn. What, yeah, you've got me. What category was it today? Um, I was trying to think of something. Gilf. No, something to do with like... One cup, big man, two girls. Something like a Man City reference there of... Uh, help me out there or not? No. No, okay, that's fine. I was too busy thinking about porn categories. Yeah, I, you were. I see it in your eyes there. actually glazed over a bit like Black Mirror. Um, what I was going to say was the only saving grace is, right, Manchester City have got these remaining games. They've got to play Wolves. They're mm. one of only three teams to have beat them go. this season. So, you know, let's raise the spirits up for that. You're excited, I can tell by your face. Um, Spurs. Um, They'll win that. Manchester City have got to go to Spurs. They've not beaten Spurs at Spurs in the Premier League, Mark, since the 29th of October, 2018. Do you know what Man City is? Is a stat for you. If anybody is get Right, for a start, Liverpool and Arsenal are going to drop more points and they're already behind. That's a fact. And then go and look at what the win ratio is for Man City in the final 10 oh, games yeah, of the that's... Premier League over the last 10 years. And it's Stinks. massive. That graph last year was the one of when the pressure got put on Arsenal and they literally drop off like that and then Manchester City just escalates into the heavens. It's not a coincidence that in April and May, the team with the best players and the biggest squad who've won it before dominate. And that's what that's what we've created. That's correlation. We've created a juggernaut. That's what we have. That's what Man City are. But in relation to Liverpool, I mean, look, there has been times this season I thought they were going to do it. Um, I really did. But what I would say about Liverpool is, you know, 24 hours after the Crystal Palace result, they'll be gutted. They should have won it. But they, they it was tight against Sheffield United. They should have beat Man United. They drew twice this season. So it's not a surprise that Liverpool have been choking in front of goal. And I think that Liverpool third in the league is still a really good season for them based on where they were last year. And the fact that this definitely 100% was a, a rebuild year for Liverpool. Also, I think we'd be very remiss of, we're talking about the competitive nature of the Premier League. Crystal Palace played absolutely fantastic in that game. Defending, Nathaniel Klein, Tariq Mitchell with some last gaps defending, which I love to see. And the goal was absolutely stunning. I know it was a, a tap in in the end. It was but good play though. Wasn't it, it was so well worked and like you, you hear a lot of coaches and um, pundits speak about like pass appreciation, which obviously City, and the goal, 
that was the best pass appreciation I've seen with my eye. Like that, um, is it Wharton who plays what in the middle? Seen, what else have you seen goals with? Your, your cock? What do you mean? He said that's the best goal I've seen with my eyes. I just want to, I'm just curious as to what other goals you, you've watched things with other than your eyes. Um, Ears maybe? Yeah. Heard? Sometimes I just listen to the pass appreciation. Yes. I can fit, use my five senses. The caress. Um, but yeah, that's Scott Wharton from Blackburn. He's having a fantastic season. Yeah. Beer is a Elise. So, Too much Palace talk. Well no, done. let's just get you've excited ru- about the Premier the title race. Oh, no. Well, from one from one ruiner to another, let's let's talk about Villa. Because actually, you know what? I will say this. I said it at the time. It's a little thing, but Aston Villa went to the Etihad two weeks ago. They had a couple of injuries, but he also benched three first team players. He basically gave Man City three points because he felt that, you know, that's what he wanted to do, Emery. Oh. They play a massive game on Thursday night. He goes to Arsenal with his strongest team. Look, th- 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 there's no complaints. Nobody can do anything. The Premier League allows it to happen. But, yeah, but also Man City different. don't need the help. Also, it's different. Th- but... and, 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 and that proves my point. That proves my point. Man City are, are, are viewed by people like Emery as, you know, there's no point. Whereas yeah. Arsenal, I'll have a go. So, you know, Man City fans, you can shut up with your comments. No, but I think... Because it... I'm not saying that... Emery cheated. No, what I'm no. saying is that Emery looked at that Man City game away from home and went, I'm not going to waste some of my players on a, on a dead rubber game, but Arsenal, I'm going to go for it. Well, that just no. tells you the problem with the league. The integrity of the league is crap. No, but Pe- th- People look at Man City and go, there's no point. But against Arsenal and Liverpool, I'll have a go. No, but I'm, I'm, and, I, and I sit here about to defend Aston Villa, which is you know something on, I'm, I'm not comfortable with. But even going into that game, I think Ollie Watkins had a knock. Who else was out? Like there were Torres was on the bench. No, there, there they, were they, injuries. They had, they had injuries, but they also benched three first team players. And then also going into this one from a narrative side, it's it's like so much more personal for Unai yeah, Emery going yeah, into yeah, that yeah, game. Yeah, I get that. going back to the Emirates where he's been treated like absolute garbage. I do get that, but again, it's just something that goes in Man City's favour because yes, I've got something personal with Arsenal. I think I could beat Arsenal, whereas Man City. Um, I'm not, you know, what's the and point? And, and 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 if there's any team people need to give a go against, it's Man City. Yeah. But also, it, going you know, in, go on. Uh, we, we, we've been speaking a lot about Manchester City squads. And our, and th- I mean, this is where it comes into the fore, isn't it? Because you were speaking about it, obviously about the performance. Zinchenko and Trossard come in and, you know, no, they've not cost them the game, but it just shows that... He's so bad, Zinchenko. The, the, the drop off from that... Like, yeah, even what well, come off his arse for that one when they were chasing down the I other way, got, Watkins hit the post. You know, I mean, I'm not an Arsenal fan, but, you know, I was doing the watch along yesterday, I was talking about Sinchenko, and the amount of Arsenal fans were going, yeah, he's been dog shit all season. You know, it's like he, uh, they definitely need a left back. I know Timber's been injured all season. But... Yeah, well, he could, yeah, he could come in for that, isn't it? But we were, we were looking at the squads as well, and is there a question to be asked? Is Aston Villa's squad stronger than Arsenal's squad? I think in certain areas, I mean, if you lose Ollie Watkins, what a player he is, they, they're going to struggle. Um, they've struggled when Torres hasn't played. But then I look at their midfield options, Douglas Louise, Ramsey and Kamara all out and they go to the Emirates and win 2-0. And, you know, in the second half, they dominated them in the midfield. So I think there's a, there's a case there. But I think with Arsenal... Um, I mean, I couldn't believe some of the stuff I saw. I mean, it's social media, isn't it? You know, you, you get these people and... You know, people will say you're a hypocrite, Mark. But to be honest, if you watch me reacting to the United now, I could easily switch a button and start, you know, coming up with an analogy or kicking a chair and stuff like that. I have thrown a chair against Chelsea, but I'm not going to do it when we're playing shit against Bournemouth or Brentford because that's what I expect. And when I see Arsenal fans, you know, shouting, Arteta has been found out. And and I just think, hold on a minute. Mm. Arteta has been found out. He's took you from nowhere to two title charges in in the last two years. Champions League quarterfinal. That's your first loss in 2024. Look, you can't compare Arsenal to Man City and any Arsenal fan that's going, Arteta has been found out. First loss of 2024, Villa are a good team who will probably finish fourth. They go to the Emirates, get the goal, Arsenal have to open up and then Villa score the second goal. It's what it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's, it happens. That's I want that to happen in the Premier League. I want to I want decent teams to go away from home and get what is perceived to be a shock result. And yet Arsenal were poor in the second half, but I think Arsenal are better this year than they were last year. But you're competing against Man City. It's like having a racing car against bloody Match Verstappen. You might, you, you can improve, but you're still going to be second. We need him to conk out and yeah, have an engine failure. I, I think Arsenal have improved massively. I think defensively they've been good. Declan Rice has been a brilliant signing. But I look at that Arsenal side and I think what's happened is, you know, it's impossible, I think, for Arsenal and Liverpool to be what Man City are. 
Because Man City have got the know-how, they've got the money and they've got the squad depth. And Arsenal have basically done what I would expect, a wobble in April. Man United won loads of titles. We didn't used to win them like Man City because we didn't have that level of dominance in, in relation to transfer market and money. So we would have a... I remember going for the title in 99. We went to Blackburn Rovers, who were going to get relegated with Brian Kidd. And we drew 1-1. Yeah. And, and, and nobody really even... We were like, oh, God, this is going tight. Whereas now you'd be like, Sir Alex, get out. What? What's the other? Fuck a trap. Get rid of the treble. <laughs> D- drawing at Blackburn against Brian Kidd. Who's he kidding? You know, uh, it'd be like absolute carnage. But that's what Man City have created. They've created yeah. this scenario whereby you have a bit of a wobble. Oh, that's it, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I, I, I don't know about you, but I look at that Arsenal side. I still don't think you go from eighth to second to maybe second. And then you go, right, he's had his chance, sack him. Still need a striker, still need another midfielder, still need a left back. So that they're not, and that's before you look at their bench. Yeah, and and but the main thing we is, don't look at Man City and go need a striker, need a left back. Yeah, but the main and if the Man City do know that those sort of players, they just spend fifty million. It, it, it's always done, isn't it? I think the main one. Well, Alvarez starts for Arsenal every week, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, definitely does. I, I just think they're building, so there's there's room to be positive. Obviously, if you keep getting so close, that's when the negativity comes because you like within touching distance of it, aren't you? I'd, and I'd, yesterday, what, 81st minute, the first goal went in. And mm. then like you said, that's when Villa pounced and Ollie Watkins turned into prime R9 with that delightful little chip over the goalkeeper. So, it, yeah, it's frustrating. But Champions League-wise, that almost means Villa have not wrapped it up. But it's a great weekend for them with Spurs absolutely stinking the joint out. It's easy to be pragmatic when it's your mate's partner that's been caught in an uncompromising position. Right. You know, maybe it was an accident that they both were at it. Yeah. You know, so but- like the David Williams thing on Little British. I fell and my yeah. toilet, uh, I flipped into the, and that was there. It was an accident. And I think we're probably sat here today where it's like we're looking at Liverpool and Arsenal. And we're massively disappointed because the title race has just become predictably boring. But I don't. But I, I, I don't think really... Arsenal and Liverpool fans. I know it's them who who are who who have caught themselves get you know something they love getting fucked, but ultimately, look at it properly. You are racing cars against Red Bull and Max Verstappen, and it, you shouldn't be surprised. Look, if the problem here is it's not the fact that Liverpool and Man and, and Arsenal have dropped points. It's the knowledge that Man City will probably win their last 10 league games yeah. or, or seven or eight games. That's abnormal because they're so good. It's not It's not abnormal to drop points in a title race. Well, it's not the 27... Unless you've got Man City in it or Bayern Munich. And I know Bayern Munich aren't going to win it this year. It's a bad example. But we have a team that has the monopoly. But then almost, you mentioned Bayer Leverkusen there. Like, what? Let's study them because they're toppling a giant there this season in terms of like you go into that season Kane moves to the Bundesliga we've already given him the trophy much weaker league yeah but they're, they're, but in uh, different resources but like there's levels to it isn't there like Bayern Munich are the Man City with different resources Arsenal and Liverpool can be the Bayer Leverkusen so but there's, no, who's... there's no Crystal Palace that's going to go to Leverkusen and get that result in the Bundesliga it's, it's it literally yeah, is. you, you no, win every but week but it's different like it's just it's the same but at different levels I think yeah, look, 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 Leverkusen have done very, Let's very well. Let's just have some bloody hope, Mark, because we can't have this Manchester I d- I, City dominance. I don't but... think there is any hope. There I think, is, yeah. I, I don't, and I don't... I actually think that points I don't... will be dropped by City just because of... I still don't think they've replaced that experience that they had at the end of last season, and I, I still think that there's some twists and turns I, I, to happen. I think Man City are winning this league comfortably on a 7 out of 10, which is terrifying. That's how good they are. I think even at times this season, some of their players have got a bit bored and complacent. And, 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 and not only that... They could win a treble. I mean, if they win a treble again, it's just... And they probably will. Uh, who's going to stop them in the FA Cup? Who's going to stop them in the Champions League? But yeah, I think Liverpool and Arsenal, massively disappointing. But when, when, but when you, well, I am. But, you know, we haven't created this monster. Have we? The Premier League have created this monster oh, and they seem to be not bothered about it. And I tell you what, what as well, I'm tired of people telling us, and I even do it, what a great league it is. But it's... Um, uh, it only matters at the end of the race how good the race is. That's true. And at the end of this race, Sheffield United and Burnley got promoted and will get relegated. And Man City were hot favourites and they'll win the league. Stop telling me we've got the best league in the world just so the Premier League can, you know, 
do another big contract with somebody. People need to wake up. We don't have the best league in the world. Man City have 115 charges against them and they've won six of the last seven Premier Leagues. That is not a good look for the Premier League and people need to wake up to it. It is not a good look for the Premier League and we are being spun like a bottle top in this pretense. They're the officiating shit as well. So why have we got the best league in the world? Even I fall for it. Oh, look at this league. Look at Fulham, Will. Oh, it's great. But ultimately, it comes down to the same thing. Well, Man City will win the league. And that's exactly why you need to become a fan of the championship with our new feature for 15 minutes. Uh, deep dive into the championship. There is no... no there is no f- f- Best feature. league in the world. We've got the title race going up for automatic promotions to the wire, playoff places, relegations down on the line. And whoever gets promoted is coming straight back down. Woo! No, but that's the sad thing. You know, I try and hold on to the loot and train express as much as I can, but like it feels like inevitable that they're going to go down to, like you said, the three teams that come up go down. The the only bright spark in the terms of like what's going to be different is this Champions League race, isn't it? Where if Aston Villa can get fourth, that will be a really good achievement for them. Well, it's a massive week, isn't it? Because we've got the Euro- Europa League and the Champions League. And I think for a long time, we were like, fifth place is going to do it. Fifth place is going to get Champions League. So Spurs and Villa will, will have it. But the week we had last week with Leverkusen, good lead over West Ham. Atalanta, massive lead over Liverpool. Arsenal have got to go to Bayern with a draw. And then, you know, Man City will beat Real Madrid, let's be honest. I hope they don't, actually. But, um, yeah, if, if 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 it goes the way it's going to go, pretty sure it won't be fifth place in the Champions League, which means it's going to be Villa or Spurs. Yeah, I just couldn't believe the... I thought going into that game that... I, I said I think I said a Tottenham win, mm. even though I was going. I told you, you did. I said don't me. go yeah. against Newcastle. At home. I said, get, and they were three 0 up with it. And I mean the back line. I mean to see Van der Ven slipping over, Isaac just absolutely. What's that? Six home games in a row he scored, and they're just getting in that rhythm now. Probably what they had last season, where they've not got European football. The cups are all done. They can just focus on the Premier League Saturday to Saturday. And Eddie Howe's coming into his his four, isn't he? I tell you what, Anthony Gordon. I don't know how you do it. And, I, you know, I think I did something last week. I can't remember. I was doing so many things with so many different hey, you're busy man, aren't you? Um But I definitely put Anthony Gordon in a Premier League team of the season and I got laughed at. And But I stand by it because I think best players, best 11 in the Premier League is obviously always going to be the Salas and the Sackers. Yeah, but when you do Premier four. League team of the season, I think this is the opportunity to put in... Ross um, Barkley. Well, well, potentially. But certainly, you know, Vicarios and people like Adogis and people like that who've had a really good season from sort of nowhere. Yeah. I think that's what team of the season is meant to be. I look at Anthony Gordon and I've seen Newcastle a lot this season. So maybe people just haven't seen him and don't see him as very fashionable. But... If you watch the Spurs game at the weekend, you'll have seen it. Well, he's been doing that all season in a bad team. It's not dissimilar to Cole Palmer. But the great thing about Anthony Gordon is he can score goals, but he's always looking to be creative. And on top of that, goals, creativity, work rate, tenacity. I mean, I would take him at Man United for 80 million tomorrow. Would and, you? Yeah, I would. I think he he is exact mentality. Then, he, then he'd come there, down tools, and then we'd have another side. Well, the reason I'd buy him is the mentality. Yeah. It's, it's it's that work ethic as well as the talent. And I tell you what, when you've got a winger who wants to create for a striker, and we don't have that at United, I think he's been brilliant this year. And I do think he deserves to be in team of the season. Now, people would say, well, who are you going to leave out? Salah or Saka or whatever? Well, let's have that debate because I, I would put him in team of the season. I think he's been that good. Um the front three for Newcastle were brilliant. Harvey Barnes, nice back to see him back fit again. Isaac, as you said, um, Spurs defence, high line caught out. Van der Ben, one of the signings of the season, probably had the worst game he's ever had in his career. Yeah. Um, par- apparently apparently played for his under nines with the shits. And he said, even that game was better than really? what I did there. Yeah. The only the only comparison was shit. Yeah, yeah really. That's so sad to see. Not good. But um, I think Villa will get that fourth spot now. I think that, that Arsenal result, is so resoundingly positive. And then when you look at Spurs, they've got Arsenal, they've got Chelsea away, Liverpool away, and then they've got Man City at home out of their last six games. So, And Villa have got a three-point gap on them. So it's Villa's to... I hate, look at his face. Well, it was the, all happy about Birmingham winning, but Villa, well, no, they, Villa, Villa Champions League football and Conference League winners. I mean, build a statue for Emery right outside St Andrews. <laughs> That'd be popular. Even that, because I think even they would go and go. <laughs> what he's a good manager. No, I'm taking the piss. But um, there could be a world where Brindley Place Villa, Villa do that, and we had a positive result at the weekend, but we're still in danger. And we go down to League One. Do you think Villa will get 
fourth place now? Um, never write off Big Ange. What have I told you? you? You're always trying to write him off. And I think this, with fourth place, if Manchester City are robotic and they're going to win all those games, that fourth place is going to be twisty turny, isn't it? Yeah. Because Villa are going to go through in the Conference League. Spurs haven't got Europe to play. You know, they've got good fixtures there. They've got like Bournemouth at home and stuff. They've still got to play. Got Villa at home. Got uh, sorry, got play? Villa at home. They've got Liverpool at home. Yeah, I I think they'll be twisting turns to that. So I will still stick with Spurs. But that is, I think Villa deserve it more. A bit more. Whoever finishes with more points deserves it more. You know why? You know why I'd give it to Villa because when I I was going to give manager moment of the weekend actually remind me of that. But if I was the reason I'd give it to Villa is because the best game of football I've seen this season and I've not seen anybody do it to Man City this season, was Villa at home to Man City. Yeah. They absolutely annihilated them. Possession, uh, shots. All over them, um, really. Yeah, Rodri didn't play, but that I think Villa do deserve it. But look, maybe Spurs can pull a miracle off at home against Man City. That's your challenge, Spurs. Um, moment of the weekend, even though he lost 4-0, I thought um, Ange pulling off Son. Beg your pardon? <laughs> Ange taking off Son in the 57th minute. Right. That, that's not my... Say, that is a moment. No, no, that would be oh, a moment. Pornhub moment that of the weekend. That would be a big, big moment. Um, no, I thought. I think that I know they lost, but as a Man United fan and seeing the way Ten Hag picks his team. Oh, do you mean like the assertiveness? Of yeah, it? just you know, Son is his captain. Yeah, is his best player. Fifty-seven minutes off, you come, and I, I love that in a manager. And if I was a Spurs fan, even though we'd lost four 0 I'd take that as a right. This guy ain't going to take any shit. And also, Spurs this season, what they could lose? When what did they lose to Chelsea at home? Like four 0 and then they go mm. and get a positive. Like this, you can't say, "Oh, is this the downslide of Spurs?" Because next week they could go home and get, go and play and get another victory. That, it's, that's, about, it's about it's about mentality. Van de Ven ain't going to play like that again. If they go and win, if they go and beat, if they beat Arsenal next week one 0 with a scrappy penalty. What does it matter that you lost four 0 at Newcastle? It's exactly. about mentality and coming back. Um, you were going to ask me about Watkins against somebody yeah well I've got down here um, we've got a few actually but I wanted to start with Ollie Watkins or Darwin Nunes we mentioned Darwin mm. Nunes shot ratio at the moment obviously you think he's better than Erling Haaland no, um, I didn't say that huh I said Haaland wouldn't start for Liverpool it's because in, there's it's not... in this book here, actually, on chapter 12. It mm. says, no, I'm only joking. Pre-order the book. Yeah, it great, might be in there. Great read. I can't I, remember. I got to read it a couple of days ago. Fantastic. Thanks. I would pre-order it. Pre-order the book, yeah. If I don't um, need to. Darwin Nunez or Ollie Watkins. It's a tough one for me because I do like Darwin Nunez, but you can't just go with, I like Darwin Nunez. I like the way that he um, holds the play up and brings everybody in. And, you know, he's he's a confident player, but he does miss big chances. Um, Ollie Watkins, if you look at him at that game at the weekend, the inside of the post was ridiculously unlucky. And then he, you know, he took, he took his other chance. For a lot of that game, he's up front on his own against two of the best centre-back partnership in the league, occupying them, you know, challenging them. I think it has to be Ollie Watkins. And I think he's the sort of player that Arsenal could do with, um, Man United could do with, Spurs could do with. I mean, look, they're fourth. It's, it's disrespectful to say, oh, Ollie Watkins could play for Arsenal. Villa are fourth. He's been absolutely incredible this season and it would have to be Dar um, Ollie Watkins over Darwin Nunez for me. As much as I like Nunez, I think Watkins is the real deal this and I, season. And I, almost, I don't want to use recency bias, but I almost think that goal against Arsenal was a big turning point for him because he spoke about it in his post-match interview as well about trying to build on the, the composure element, which is such a simple statistic to look at. But when he's got Gabriel chasing him down, you're one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, all that pressure, maybe before he goes low, he tries to go under the keeper's legs, but to chip it, at, way at the Emirates I really think that was a bit of a defining moment in terms of I know he was tweeting about Troy Deeney at the end of the game saying oh, I'm not I'm a striker not a winger or whatever and I, and I do think it's a bit of a defining moment for him whereas we've spoke from an England perspective as well of like does he start for England like Alan Shearer had a, a cane in the number 10 hole that was a different debate but if they get Champions League football and he's their main man like you, st you, you will put him ahead of a Darwin Nunes you will put him ahead of well put him in the back categories going forward maybe with an Erling Haaland I think it's the advantage that teams like Newcastle and Villa have is that they've got two strikers in Isaac and Watkins that are you know nobody's you look at what Brentford want for Ivan Tony, 60 70 million with one year left on his contract Newcastle and Villa are going to say the bidding starts at 100 million quid that's very prohibitive for anybody that's going to be looking for a striker that, that like that other than Man City who won't be. So the, the advantage that Newcastle and Villa have got next year is you're not going to lose this player that's going to pretty much injury apart, going to score you 20 goals. The thing for Villa as well, next season, this almost 
becoming the hunter, going to the hunted. Like if you've got Champions League football, you're asserting yourself as a top four club. When you go to the Emirates next year, it's a different game. It's the Newcastle effect, isn't it? Look, yeah. at, look at Newcastle and Man United this year. They qualified for the Champions League last year. Spurs and or Villa next year. Got to be very careful of that because that Champions League can then, you take your eye off the Premier League, you, you back down again and everyone forgets the good season. Because one we didn't cover on it, I've put down, would you rather have Unai Emery or Arteta? Now, is this, I think this slightly is unfair because... Mm. They're different stages of their career. And also Emery's at that sort of Villarreal-esque club with Aston Villa, calm mm. down Villa fans, in terms of they're the challengers, aren't they? Whereas at Arsenal, he was trying to rebuild, do a bit of a, maybe a, a David Moyes after uh, Arsene Wenger left. Like he's, he and he took an Aston Villa side after Steven Gerrard, who were 17th in the Premier League. He's got his hands all over that project, isn't he? He's got his own director of football, own technical director. They got rid of Christian Perslow, was it? So he runs that club. He is the pep of Aston Villa. Whereas I don't think he'd get that opportunity at Arsenal, would he? No, I think if he went to Arsenal now, he'd probably do a lot better because I speak to a lot of Arsenal fans about Emery and I say like, did he get rid of him too soon? And th th they just say, look, it, it was never a good fit. No one ever really trusted it and no one was really willing to give it any time. Whereas, as you say, Villa, you go in, they were grateful to have him. They wanted to utilise... He, he was a good appointment for them. Big fish in a small pond. Yeah, and, he, and he's given that. Whereas Arteta came in as an ex-player, first job, he naturally is going to get that time and patience. And even then, they were printing Arteta to out T-shirts. So I, I think that the Arsenal projects, you can't really look at that. Where they are as coaches... I mean, Arteta has done a very good job at Arsenal and we mustn't dismiss it just because they're going to miss out to a juggernaut again who have far more resources, quality and experience than, than Arsenal do. So I think Arteta's done a very, very good job. I would say Emery. I think what Emery's... The, the, the thing that Emery's got is that he's, he's done it across two seasons. We, we've spoken about De Zerbi and he's... I mean, they were very lucky to get a point against Burnley. They've had a terrible season. Um, we've spoken about Ange. We've only got one year. We've spoken about Ten Hag. One year good, one year bad. Whereas Emery, amazing run, taking over from a crap Villa team under Gerrard to the end of the season and then has replicated it across another season. So I think you've got to say that Emery, with the catalogue of CV that he's got... Um, in Spain as well. Yeah, there's a couple of blips at PSG and Arsenal, but I think Emery, if we're being completely honest, is a better coach than Arteta at the moment. But Arteta's still in his first job. He's still learning on the job. I think he's got the potential to supersede Emery, but right here, right now, and I think it evidenced itself perfectly in the second half at the weekend, how Emery just took that game away from Arteta. Because with that, the job he's doing and, and the level he's doing it at, would you almost like... It feels no, normally if that was like a younger manager, this would be where Liverpool comes calling. Mm. But like, is is that Arsenal experience or ruined him? Like, is he going to have to take Villa to that level? I'd, I'd take go? him at United. Would you? I don't want Ten Hag to go, but I'd take him at United. As a lot of United fans feel the same. Um, I don't know why a Liverpool aren't looking at him. Um, but then again. What's his incentive to leave Aston Villa? Yeah. You know, he's at a stage of his career where he's probably really happy. He's got a lot of control. He's got a lot of trust. They're about to win a trophy. They're about to get Champions League football. Why would you not want to follow that through? So maybe it's cost to take him out of Villa and desire for him to stay at Villa. Yeah. And, you know, and, and maybe he respects Villa because they gave him a chance in the Premier League after being spat out by Arsenal. So maybe that's what it's all about because he's a very good coach. Right, we'd be remiss. What, how long are we into the podcast now? We're about 40, 50 minutes in. 43, mi 43 minutes in. Big Nearly weekend. Nearly half time. Big weekend for you. Garnacho. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I've got my top on. Representing. I am, I said it, I am the admin. I, I am the admin. I like am the admin. Liking my own now. tweets. Yeah. So just talk us through what's happened. Oh, basically, um, you know... I'm, and it's all your fault. Well, how it's my fault, I don't know. So basically, I tweet about football, like most of us do. Yeah. And at half time, um, when Ganacho was taken off, I said, I think it's out of order taking Ganacho off. We're a better team with him on the left. He was starting on the right, made a couple of mistakes. Take Rashford off, who's been rubbish for weeks, put Ganacho on the left and happy days. He takes Ganacho off at half time, which basically throws him under the bus to everybody because it's not normal that he gets subbed off at half time. So he's blaming Ganacho. I said that in one tweet and then after the game he sort of blamed Ganacho for the goals and I said oh that's a really good look Ganacho this season actually has delivered yeah he's 19 you've thrown him under the bus and yet that's because you're scared of the big earners like Casemiro and Rashford who you don't call out because you're scared yeah Ganacho or his admin 
like both tweets after the game. Yeah. That's the situation. Surely that's got to be him, though, because you can't have your admin liking the tweets. Of course you can. Really? It was quite quick after the game as well. Like, he'd have, to, he'd literally have to be in the dressing room going... But they're like that, though, players now, no, aren't but they? they are, yeah. But, but look, he's, still, he's, he's, he's unlike them now. Um, and Damage is done, though, Mark. Well, the damage is done, but then in this, I don't agree with players doing that. I, I, you know, whether it's Liverpool players or not, I think you have to respect the hierarchy. But then again... Um, it does give you an insight into the dressing room that they, they, you know, there is, on a, on a very, on a very basic level, the, can you not? He shouldn't like it, but Ganacho not being happy about being subbed off isn't a bad thing. Ganacho yeah, not being no. happy that you know he's been, you know, there are players on the pitch who are more senior than him who are getting professional treatment, professional uh, preferential treatment is not a bad thing. And also, let's not forget. There was other United players putting pictures out with zipped mouths. Yeah. And also, Marcus Rashford was out on the piss when he should have been at training. Jaden Sancho wrote a tweet and didn't apologise for it. So it's just a, a catalogue of things at United, which I think actually we shouldn't probably focus on that as much as some of the media want to, because the bigger picture is Man United's team against Bournemouth is on £2 million a week. Bournemouth won't even be on three hundred grand a week. And for the how many times this season... Man United got absolutely dominated and yeah. that shouldn't take away from the fact that, you know, it's inexplicable how bad some of these players are. I just don't understand the the mentality of it, innit? It's like me and you doing this podcast now, you pissing me off and then me going on Twitter straight away, someone, someone calling you a knob and me liking it. But that's what it is though, isn't it? Yeah. You're, you're paid to do your job. You should be professional. You shouldn't be throwing your toys out of the pram because you've been substituted and being like that. You've got to deal with that in-house, and I agree with you, Ten Hag's dealt with it wrong, but it's just mind-boggling the lack of professionalism at one of the biggest clubs. This is Man United. But it's been going on for years. Yeah. It's no, it's nothing new, and that's what I mean. It's not fair to throw... And that's not just because he liked my tweets. You know, obviously I was, helps I, a little bit I, though, I was talking sense, but I just think that it's also, you know, why is Casemiro one of the greatest holding midfielders in the game? playing like he's the midfielder on pro clubs, wandering forward. Like, you know, it's, why is Marcus Rashford, one of the best talents in England, according to Gary Neville, playing, you know, like some sort of championship winger that can't be asked? It's it's the, 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 the whole team. I mean, look, that that was for me it at the weekend. I think I think Ten Hag has but, almost has given up himself. It just looks like he's given up. His, his team selections are lazy, doesn't want to make subs. The style of football is like, I don't know how you'd, you know, I've done coaching and you, you're you watching that game as a fan and you're thinking as a coach and you're going, they're dominating us. Yeah. They're dominating us. You can't just hope that they're going to keep missing shots and we might get a breakaway. And that just seems to be the plan. It's like, I look at Newcastle at the weekend, 30% possession at home to Spurs, the win 4-0. Yeah. New, Fulham away the previous week, 30% possession, they win 1-0. Because Eddie Howe is playing compact, not giving up chances and counter-attacking. Whereas Ten Hag is just going wide open and hoping that we outscore the opposition. And well, it's, it's even incredible. like down to the little bits of like the amount of effort around even just like highlighting on the goals as well and the closing down and just like the time and space that someone that was um, Cliver has for the second goal just to do what he wants in the box. Like you'd have about if you've got a manager that you all believe in and you've got a a team that believes in that ethos, like you you're the three or four people surrounding you know compare that to Crystal Palace defending their box against Liverpool yeah, it's, it's absolute night and day isn't it 100% and I think that that is the big problem that he's got is that you know people have just completely and utterly lost faith in him and um, you know we've said Jurgen Klopp said it before it's like the, the 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 Jurgen Klopp principle at Liverpool has always been you've got to run harder and longer than any other team yeah. and at that point quality will come through mm -hmm. so basically what he's saying is you've got to go out there and fight to to earn the right to then win the win, win the fight and United just they don't put that in and 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 this is the problem with United we've got Coventry in the cup and then they will put up a fight and then you've got Burnley and Sheffield United at home where you should win because they're the two worst teams in the league but all three of those teams will know if we go in there and absolutely give it everything you'll have a chance to win this game Yeah. and as a United fan I sit there and go well over the last few weeks there's hardly any times that as a collective because it's got to be a collective as well Yeah. it's got to be 11 players that we've done that so yeah it's, it's I mean where you go next um I don't know, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's hard to watch United at the moment because I've got no faith in them getting any results. Well, yeah, but surely the saving grace is the Ineos stuff. Where are they? Yeah, 
but it's hard. You can't like you can't implement it. Like I think they've done well to even get to the stages where we're out of talking. You know, with Will Cox and uh, Dan Ashworth of like who are going to come. I think it's an expectation thing, isn't it? You can't bring these people in straight away just because if you want to bring in the best, they're going to be working, and if they're not, they're not the best. Do you know what I mean? But I, I no, but I, where I disagree is that if you are in charge of Man City or Arsenal or Liverpool and you've got a manager that's in trouble and you're probably going to sack and you're waiting for your CEO and your director of football because they are the best in class, then you as an owner in charge of the footballing needs to step in in the interim. And at the moment, they've just left Ten Hag to it. And nobody really respects the fact that Ten Hag will be there. And that we're, we're dropping down the league. So we need to hold on to sixth place. So if I'm Sir Jim Radcliffe, I'm looking at that league table and I'm going look, I'll take sixth place now, let's get to the summer. But that is in jeopardy. So the manager has clearly lost it. The players are clearly not giving anything. So if I'm Sir Jim Radcliffe, I've got to step in. I've got to be visible. I've got to put a few, you know, I've got to do an interview with the BBC. I've got to do something to turn the tide. And I've visibly got to get into Carrington and speak to those players and say, what's going on? No, I can't do the tactics. I can't pick the team, but I can get into Carrington and say, we're Manchester United. It's not acceptable. We've got two months left of the season. We've got big, big plans here and we want you to be part of it. Now, don't tell the truth that some of them aren't. You say, we want you, Will, to be part of next season's podcast, even though me and Niall know you won't be. Oh, God. Right? That so, contract's still up for renewal. So basically, it? but you, 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 I want you to go, yeah, I am part yeah, of this. Yeah, fuck you, and though. I am part of this. Yeah. You know, that's what, that's what I want to see from Ineos. And I think what they're doing is they're leaving Sorry. it to, they're just leaving it to ride. And if they're leaving it because they want Ten Hag to, you know, sink in his own shit, fine. But if you're going to do that, I would sack Ten Hag now. I said this on the podcast on oh, Friday. Yeah, didn't yeah. I? If you know he's not the manager, what better time to sack him than now, knowing that an, an interim... Even me and you could go in there and go, oh, Coventry, Burnley, Sheffield United, that's yeah. three wins, get the new player bounce. And then Ineos could be interviewing some of the managers they won't be able to get because they'll be gone by the end of May. Yeah. So I just think Ineos could be doing more. Ineos need to be vocal about what they're doing yeah. because it would, we know what players are like, especially Man United players. They, they they always use, oh, it's not my fault, the club's a mess. Yeah. But if the club is publicly putting it out there, it just needs a bit of, it needs something. Bring some flowers in, you know. Just give it, give give the place a bit of a boost. Yeah, I just, yeah, I, I, just, I think like you said, like the, the statements just need to come out, don't they? Just yeah. be like this, it, and even for not. I mean, for, Ten for the getting up and walking out of press conferences. You know, players well, are liking tweaks. Either. People are putting the zip out. It's like we need some positive PR. Yeah. You know, the fans are exhausted. Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, just before I think we briefly touched on it, but just before we get to part of the week, Champions League either or yeah, City or Real Madrid. City. You reckon? Yeah. I'm about Bellingham. I think Real Madrid. I'd love Real Madrid to do it. I am totally and utterly Hala Madrid, but um, <laughs> I'm not. I, I just think City are in that area now. I where... think we could have a week where it's Real Madrid and Bayern Munich knocking us both out. I don't want Man City Arsenal semi final. I think it'll be boring as shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think everyone talks about the, the all English games. I think the best one. I think Arsenal will beat Bayern, though. Hot take. Yeah. yeah. At, in Munich. I think everyone will write them off and that might help Arsenal. The probably pressure. better away from being away from home just in terms of that Emirates cauldron. Yeah. And also, I think I don't, I hate Thursday night football and I don't normally do watch alongs. I said on Friday, I'm doing Thursday night watch along on that's football because I'm convinced Liverpool are going to come back from 3 0 down against yeah, Atalanta. Of it, doesn't it? it does. And then it could be the rebirth. And then... It's hard for Atalanta though because they won 3 0 with 30% possession. Mm. They're not going to play on the front foot, mm. they're going to sit back. And if Liverpool score one, and then it's two, it's over because you can't change your mentality then. Yeah. Oh, that'd be interesting. This yeah. is this is what we should live for. You yeah. know, uh, nice from you. A nice bit of positivity there. Also, it could be Jurgen Klopp's last game in Europe for Liverpool if they lose. I wonder what Jurgen Klopp will do next. Holiday. No, after holiday. Well, I don't know because, I mean, I don't want to talk about Leverkusen. Well done. But Alonso staying at Leverkusen, Bayern are going to bounce back next year. So what's your motivation? It has to be because Real Madrid are going to get rid of Ancelotti next summer. But then if you're Real Madrid and Jurgen Klopp around Christmas says, I'm ready to come back. I don't know if Jurgen you, Klopp you, and Madrid, like it would, obviously it might would not go, be his sort it of club. It wouldn't yeah. be his fit, would it? Maybe he'd be Barca. You need to be, um, maybe more Barca, but like you need to find that sort of, who it would be? Because you think where Liverpool well, he were. Be, he can't do a Premier League club. It's like a fallen giant. Unless he it? comes back to Liverpool. Maybe, maybe he comes in at Blues, sort of a fallen giant. I don't think he'll ever manage in England again, unless it's Liverpool. Maybe just his national team. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a bit true. of shame though because I still, still think he's got a lot to offer uh, uh, let's do Pratt of the Week Pratt of the Week yeah let's get straight into it um, I've got down well I had let's go through what we've already spoken about I had Garnacho for liking your tweets just because I think he's a bit he's of a not pratt. the first to do that though is he no well, all right. that's just my, my opinion okay. I think he's a Pratt um, well, well, the, well we've got comments you, you are more than welcome to get involved yeah exactly and also we I, I put down Jamie Redknapp's comments actually can I just say on that we were playing this game just before we went live um, get in the comments with and don't start Googling it. Just like do it off the top of your head. We'll tell if you're cheating because you should only come up with three or four. You've got 20 seconds to come up with footballers with the initials AG. No, we've already done AG there. No, but they can do it. All right, let's do a new initials. WB. WB. Where's Brown? <laughs> Ooh. William, Will, Brazier. No, let's Not do your, your initials, MG. Mason Greenwood. Uh, there's got to be M- there's got to be loads of MGs. Mark. Martin. Matt. Granger. Martin Granger played for Blues left back. There you go. There what a great game that is. That's we'll be brilliant. ringing that back every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Anyway, I've got a good part of the week. Simon Jordan. Right. Simon Jordan has basically said that Man City's dominance doesn't impact how good and strong the Premier League is. And, you know, I don't want to go over old ground here, but what, what, what are we talking here? Are we talking about the fact that I heard what he said and he was like, well, look at the last three Premier League's, it's been close until April. And in the Bundesliga, it's not been close. Mm, Leverkusen have just won it. Um, last year, Dortmund could have won it and blew it on the last final day. Um, look, the, you know the title race is not interesting when everybody says at the start of the season, Man City will win it and they still do win it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if somebody pushes them to April or May. If Man City still win it and they've won six out of seven, you've got a problem. If they've got 115 charges against them, you've got a bigger problem. And if you're looking at the next five years and you're predicting they're going to win it for the next five years, you've got a huge problem. So I don't think, and I've said it, people can clip me up. The Premier League's the best in the world. It's it's the best in the world in relation to the the competitiveness from second to about 15th. Yeah. And I think Fulham epitomise that. But actually the, the final result will always be most of the newly promoted teams will go down and Man City will win the league. And that is a massive problem. And the Premier League are very good at brand Premier League, but the officiating is probably horrific, if we're being honest as well. Um, I mean, say, we, we've created a podcast out of the fact that there's so many problems with it. I'd say the Championship is much more competitive than the Premier League. Yeah. And more fun well, look to at watch. Ipswich, straight up, straight up. Yeah, I, I, I just think... Birmingham that, going down. Steady on you. I just think every year you've got... I, I, also from a story perspective and obviously we do a lot of work in it I just think the championship I, I don't want to be in it I want to get out of it but I think they always say the best place you could finish as a football fan is seventh in the championship because you'd win enough games to enjoy the season you'd flirt with the playoffs but then you'd stay in the championship forever and ever forever and, ever, and, ever, and ever. we've been in there forever and ever yeah so I think I think um, anybody defending the Premier League this morning saying it's the best league in the world is is a bit of a prat because it's just I mean, what what's your angle? Have you got shares in it? You know, have you got a job that's dependent on, you know, talking about it all the time and pretending? I mean, look, there's nobody more than me that wants to champion an Arsenal and say, yes, this league's great. But ultimately, it's disappointing this morning. It's dis- it is disappointing. But Liverpool and Arsenal, when you deep it, aren't anywhere near no. squad depth of uh, and financials of Man City. And, and that is what we're, we're faced with and we'll be faced with it next season and and, it, and it's a depressing thought that I think most of most fans in the world apart from Man City fans are praying that somewhere Man City don't win another treble because I think that's dangerous that treble that Man United won was held up as you know virtually impossible yeah. and for a team to go and do it two years in a row yeah, it, it it is impossible for an Arsenal or Liverpool to win a treble. Yeah. It's not impossible for a juggernaut with that wealth and experience and depth to do it. And it's making a mockery. So Simon Jordan, you're a prat. Uh, another nomination that was put up was Jamie Redknapp, obviously c- criticised Casemiro. He was said he played in like he was in a soccer aid game. I don't actually have a problem with this because I, I think this is where we struggle between old media and new media. Mm. Because, you know, see with Sky Sports on their YouTube channel trying to 
basically bringing YouTube concepts onto to the onto the mainstream. And this is what you have to get with punditry as well. I don't have a problem with Jamie Redknapp saying that. Maybe it is a little bit disrespectful, but in comparison to like fan media, fan entertainment, that's the way the conversation is going. And Jamie Redknapp is just just a pundit. Like everyone goes, why am I paying my uh, Sky subscription for this? Well, it doesn't really... I don't get that argument because what you so you're paying to say what he can and can't say in that environment. So I just think everyone needs to chill out a little bit. Yeah. So I mean, look, Casemiro is not playing well. Jamie Radnap says he's running around like he's playing a game of soccer aid. I mean, I've said that he's running around like you've been asked to play a holding midfielder in pro clubs and yeah. you really want to get forward. Like there's no discipline there, and he looks way off the pace. So. Yeah, I don't have a massive problem with it. I mean, look, you could come back and say Jamie Redknapp's career was like watching an episode of Casualty because he was always injured. Th- th- this is the way we talk. This yeah. is what we do. If if the mainstream want to have a go at it, fine. You will get the kickback from it. That's a, that's that's the way it works. Um, look, every part of me wanted to have a pop at Jamie Redknapp for saying it, but and it is dis- disrespectful. But ultimately, right. it's a different way of saying that somebody's not playing well. The only thing I would say is, would he? Th- would he? T- what would he and why didn't he come up with some sort of pun or joke around Marcus Rashford? But that's a completely separate argument. I'll argue it with anybody. The media in this country are very, very biased around British players. And at Man United, you see it with Maguire, Rashford and others over the years, comparable to Martial or a Bruno. They, Anthony, they're quite vile towards foreign players in, in their criticism, but they protect the British players maybe because they got them on WhatsApp. So other than that, I didn't really have a massive problem with it because... Um, you know, it's, 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 a bit of fun. it's a bit of banter, isn't it? bit of fun. Who would you put as your part of the week then? Simon I think it's got to be Simon Jordan because yeah. it, him defending the Premier League, making out that it's not a problem that a team's about to win six in seven. I mean, that's just... Look, Man United used to win a lot of leagues and this is what City fans will say. Oh, Man United won a lot of leagues and we did. But most of them, you felt that there was a vulnerability to Man United. I mean, I, I lived it and there wasn't many seasons where I went, oh, this is easy, get yeah, my feet yeah. up. Like... you. You, you enjoyed the title race and, and sometimes it was over in April and you'd be like get, put your feet up but you never really felt in May in, in August that yeah we're probably favourites but there was always a vulnerability there I think with Man City you know I, I'll say again I think they'll have it won by Christmas next year yeah and that's a sad thing what's not a sad thing is our brand new game whoa we were coming into the quiz last week and look, we were disrespectful to yeah. you. We were disrespectful to the listeners. Uh, we weren't at our best when it came to the quiz. So we got rid of it. What we love and what you love is a bit of nostalgia. Mm. So um, it could be recent nostalgia. So uh, producer Niall has picked a squad, uh, a famous squad from Premier League history. Yeah. And um, he's going to tell us what that is, Niall. Who, who have we got? We have oh, the... a bit nervous. Speak up. Then we have the 2013-14 Liverpool side. Wow. Ooh. Is that the Roy Hodgson era? Uh, no, it's the Brendan Rodgers era. Brendan oh, Rodgers era. Okay. okay, so what's going to work is Mark will say a player, I'll say a player. If we get wrong, wrong, Niall will tell us. Uh, we've got one uh, like one uh, wrong answer to go through. So you've got one life, uh, live it. And if you're out, you're out and we'll start a new game. He's going to beat me at this because I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. I couldn't remember what the name of the right back who was Northern Irish for Liverpool was at the weekend. I'd had a lot of red wine the night Conor before. Bradley. Yeah. I was going Barkley. Conor Bradley. Was, it's Barkley. Yeah, that's what I couldn't oh, remember. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You're still pissed. Right, you can start. Um, okay, so I've got a name of player from that team. Yeah. I will go with Raheem Sterling. Correct, yeah. Uh, I will go with Daniel Sturridge. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. I'll, co- I'll complete the front three, Suarez. Correct, yeah. I'll go with Coutinho. Okay, no, no. That and that and that's that, that's me now in surely not big trouble. I, I, I just that think was some the, of the scenes from that team. That was the four that I really knew about. Um, Rogers, I, there's, there's a lot that I think are, that are there that are not there. Say what you're thinking. Um, Gerard, obviously. Yeah. Gerard was there. Lucas Laver. Yes. Oh, is it squad? Yeah, yeah. Um, Carragher. No, he was punditry then. Yeah, yeah, Carragher has gone. Oh, okay, so that's so, your first. So okay. no more from you, young man. I'll go Martin Skirtle. Correct, nice one. Uh, he's. I reckon you... Yes, this is like fucking Jamie on the fill-in with Ben Foster. Are you having a laugh? These are questions. I don't bloody... I can't even think... I can't think of any players from that era other than the ones I've named. I think defenders. Oh, uh, what about that one? Uh, Spanish guy, left back, big nose. 
I know exactly who you're thinking. I've worked with him quite a lot of times. He's actually a really nice guy. Tell me his name then. No chance. We can't Come. we can't accept big nose, so we're no, gonna name. Um, you're talking about me. Um Oh, people are going to be... What about... No, I nearly said Steve Finnan. That's about 10 years too no, late. No, 10 years too uh, late. I'll just say Jordan Henderson, even though I know he's not there. Oh, no, he might have been. Uh, Jordan Henderson's there. Oh, oh right. Jordan okay. Henderson. Uh, I'll go for Jose... Em- no, actually, I don't think... You're thinking of Jose Enrique, but I don't know yeah, if he was there. He was. Was he? I'm going to go for Nathaniel Klein. Oh, God. Oh, no. I can't. He's not here, no. No. Okay. You've lost a life. It's okay. I'll it's go Jose death. Enriquez, because that's the one I was thinking about. Now, are you going Enriquez or Enrique? Enrique. That's correct. Yeah. I'm uh, oh, I'm actually in tr- Simon Mignolet. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't have been in goal then, surely. He was in goal for the uh, Chris Stambul game. Oh, was he? Yeah. Um, who, else was who else was playing for Liverpool then? Oh, this is quite a good game now. I think um, I've got a good one. I'm going to go with... I just can't think of anybody. Virgil van Dijk wouldn't have been there then. Milner. No, is it City? No, no. So James. I need this I'm for out. the win. This I'll do for this the for the win. I was going to go Mario Balotelli. No. No. Oh, back in then. Back in then. Hot hot round. Hot round. Oh, it's so hot and spicy. Um, um, Alonso. No, he'd gone, Mark. No, what Alonso are you on about? Shabby. Shabby Alonso at Liverpool then. No. When was he there? Like 10 years previous. It was Steve Finn and he was there with Gerard. Yeah, I'm not a Liverpool fan. Um, I'm, glad I'm, I'm glad I'm messing this up. Arbeloa. No, that was Ar- oh, Aquilani. <laughs> no, that's no. Oh, God, what's his name? Um, Dirk Coit. <laughs> no, you've had your go. Um, Jordan Ibe. Uh this is this is drama in the chat. Jordan Ibe. Would he be down as a midfielder? I can't see him. No, he wouldn't be there. Uh, Coit. No. Um, mm, fucking hate oh Liverpool. Oh my god. Let's just call it a draw. Last last one for me because you went first. Um, I was trying to think of like a random keeper that would have been there. All the Liverpool fans be going mad. It's oh. so easy when it's your club. Arva Lower. You've already said him. No, I meant. Um, I know one, Alpaz. No. Who? As- He's a striker. Aspas. Aspas. Uh, Aspas. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thanks. That's Thank me. Thank you. That's me. That's- <laughs> you didn't say Aspas. Oh, that's the one I you meant. You said Alpaz. I said Alpaz. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing. I win there 1 0 to me. Sardarf. I don't know whether we're keeping this one. That- this has sort of been thrown upon me. That was, well, we can just debate. Maybe we go through. This is our format stage. So someone like Richard Osman, who created lots of good quizzes. That was yeah. quiz one. Until the end of the season, we'll do something different. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then you can pick and something you like. People can get in the comments and let us know. Oh, yeah, they will. Because yeah. we murdered that, really. We did. Well, you murdered it. I got it right because I won. But I don't like Liverpool, so. Well, I don't like you, but I turn up every week. Same. Feelings mutual. There we go. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Get your comments in below. Don't forget, if you're on Spotify, give us five stars. And uh, don't forget the book. Goldbridge book is out. We'll drop the link in the description. You can get on Amazon. Pre-order it. Appreciate that. Ultras. Get your book order in. Uh, we'll be announcing where you can get it signed and book signings. Oh, and wow. Tour yeah. And like I'll get mine very, signed. Very soon. Yeah. Thank you. What would you say? in my, A message to me? I just signed MG. Oh, not even like two will. Oh, Thanks for being a long-term That's listener. Second. No. Thanks for the contribution. So no there'll be a big queue. Just oh. be MG. Bye. Oh. I might even get a stamp. <laughs> you would be the one to get a stamp. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care.